Hey, it's Lucky, and today we got a new Godot release, 4.5, and today I want to go over my favorite new features in the release. I'm mostly going to go in depth on the new stencil buffer, what it means, how to use it, but I'm also going to talk about some other minor updates. So let's get into it. The first thing I want to talk about is the animation player quality of life upgrades. I use the animation player a lot, and we just got a bunch of new nice tools to create and manage Bizzer Curves animations. As you can see right here in this clip, I can easily add animation points, skill points as a whole, or move them around, allowing for very intuitive tweaking of animations. And if you're wondering how to get to this Bezier Curve view instead of your normal keyframe view, you actually have to create the animation in a specific way to access these features. So if you would just create an animation like you're used to, create a closed door animation, and then for example, we wanna animate the rotation of this door. If you just add your keyframes like this, it's not gonna allow you to go into that curve editor. What I do is I uh, add a track in the animation player, there's your curve track, and select your object and your property you wanna animate, so rotation. And now if you insert keyframes, it's gonna allow you to go into that curve editor where you can nicely manage your animation using curves. The next feature I wanna talk about is the stacked effect feature on text. You can now stack as many outlines and shadows on a text object as you'd like, allowing for the creation of these very fancy fonts. You can find these settings in any label settings object. It is a little confusing to me that the original outline and shadow settings are still there. So now we have two shadow and two outline options on text label settings, which is a little weird, but I suppose the proper way is just always use the stacked ones, even if you're gonna do one, because in case you wanna add one later, you can always apply another stack. And finally, let's jump into the big new feature, the stencil buffer. So what is a stencil buffer? If you've never heard of a stencil buffer before, it's really one of those things that need to click in your head and then it all makes sense. So I'm really gonna try my best to explain it here. A stencil buffer is a giant map of the screen that keeps track of every pixel. And every pixel can have a value between one and 255. We don't actually render the stencil buffer itself, but instead we allow objects to write into the stencil buffer and read out of the stencil buffer. So for example, these three planes that I have in this scene, each one is writing to the stencil buffer, writing the values 1, 2, and 3, represented here in RGB. Then the objects behind these planes are checking against the stencil buffer. So basically they go to the stencil buffer and they ask it, hey, are my pixels covered by 1s? Then draw me. Are my pixels covered by 2s in the stencil buffer? Then draw me, and otherwise don't. Basically allowing for the functionality of 3D masks. And for a more practical example, I have this boat scene. You can see that if we're not using the stencil buffer and we dip this boat below the water, of course the water goes inside the boat. But when we're adding a stencil mask for the inside of the boat only, you can see even if the boat goes below the water, I'm masking out the water so you can still see the inside of the boat. Another famous use case for the stencil buffer is outlines. Uh, you can easily render your object scaled up a little bit into the stencil buffer and use that scaled up version as an outline. You can see the way it's done here, it's by scaling up the faces, actually not really scaling up, just moving up the faces along their normals, and then using that as the outline, which creates some gaps in low poly models, in higher poly models. Let me switch to something high poly, capsule. You can see, works perfectly, absolutely beautiful outline, super nice to have implemented, but yeah, watch out with low poly models. Uh, let's go back to the cube. With low poly models, it will create some gaps. For lower poly models, I still recommend the uh, scaling the whole object, not just the faces. You can see it demonstrated here. There's a bunch of tutorials online on how to do this outline effect. And it gives a little bit better result. And of course, there are a bunch more use cases for the stencil buffer. So definitely check out the stencil demo that was released with the release of 4.5. You can see this X-ray effect. It's kind of a cool effect. Basically, it's replacing the material if the object is behind something. Quite cool. We kind of could already do this with inverse depth testing, but whatever. Um, here the outline effect again. X-ray is basically checking if an object is occluded and then render it. And custom is what we use to write and read out of the stencil buffer for our own effects. Also, there's this camp demo, which showcases this wind waker fire effect. It's super cool. Let me show you. Basically the shape of the fire is being written into the stencil buffer. And then there's this very simple fire shape that is then uh, testing against it. Here, I can actually showcase that. Um, let's go into the campfire, open anyway. So here you see the stencil. Right here on the right, you can see that shape. It's basically a scrolling texture. So if we scroll it, 
you can see how that creates that fire effect and then the actual color is just this super simple shape here you can see allowing for this very trippy but kind of cool fire effect but i feel obligated to give another warning here this implementation the built-in implementation of the stencil buffer it's a little bit jank in my opinion because even if we look at this official demo you can see in the script they had to overwrite the render uh, priority aka the render order of the materials to make sure that they render uh, after each other otherwise this effect does not work so even in the official demo there's a little hack in here and it's definitely not like the godot team is hiding something from us or anything in all the stencil settings it does say experimental this is a very new feature so it's not perfect yet but i just do also want to give that warning when you start playing with this you have to mess around with some things you have to tweak it a little bit one thing that i found always needs tweaking is the render priority objects that set the mask so that put pixels into the buffer always need to be a lower render priority than the uh, objects taking it out obviously but this isn't done by default when you start using the the mask and isn't really shown anywhere so yeah keep in mind play with your render priority play around with it a lot it does take a little bit of fiddling but it is super powerful and i'm super glad we finally have it in godot because i know the user base is gonna go crazy with this so those are all the features i wanted to talk about definitely read through the blog post yourself there's a bunch of new features a lot of useful stuff uh, or oh, one last thing i really wanted to showcase is the chunk tile map physics uh, before when you use a tile map every single tile had its own little collision box and now they're being chunked into a big one i wanted to point this out because if you're using a tile map right now and you're using some logic for example detecting if you collide with a certain tile and then using its location this functionality is now broken because it's one giant collider so if you for example have a single door and you're checking for the collision of the point of that door it will now be the center of the giant collision chunk so that's some functionality that might break your game when updating so uh, keep that in mind but other than that bunch of quality of life upgrades a bunch of things done to unique assets and duplication uh, yeah so read through the blog post enjoy the new update and i'll see you guys very soon bye